Please, let's take our seats. Asante ni sana. <clears throat> Your Excellency, my good brother, former president, former vice president of Nigeria. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this is a wonderful afternoon. It is my, I think, fifth time to be in Kansas City. And it's always a pleasure to be here. And I'm honored to welcome all of you to Africa's Silicon Savannah on this momentous occasion as we launch the Africa Center of Competence for Digital and Artificial Intelligence and the Timbuktu Green Tech Hub. This initiative showcases the immense transformative potential we possess and the opportunity to define and deliver the Africa we want in alignment with Agenda 2063, the Pact for the Future, and the Global Digital Compact. These facilities will go a long way towards addressing digital divides, providing viable models for implementing digital se sector transformation strategies, and thirdly, paving the way for a sustainable human-centered technological future. This occasion provides an excellent platform to briefly discuss the different ways in which our bottom-up economic transformation agenda prioritizes digital transformation as a cornerstone of inclusive growth. Already, a number of key initiatives under this agenda are well underway. First, we are undertaking an ambitious expansion of digital infrastructure by developing a 100-kilometer fiber optic network to connect 74,000 public institutions and establish 25,000 public Wi-Fi hotspots countrywide. I listened very carefully to the governor of this uh, great county, and uh, he mentioned about that fiber optic. I want to say here that we have now decided to partner with Kenya Power so that we can use the extensive infrastructure of Kenya Power to deliver fiber optic. It will make it much more easy for us to deliver fiber optic to public institutions that are already connected to uh, electricity and eventually deliver fiber optic to homes. And that is why I say our focus we have approximately 74,000 public institutions. Our focus is to deliver fiber optic to all these institutions. And we have rolled out phase one with Kenya Power. Uh, minister here is uh, very well seized of, of that intervention. And we are working with collaboratively with other partners to make sure that we deliver on that commitment. We believe this infrastructure will expand internet connectivity to 8.5 million homes and businesses, significantly reducing the digital divide across homes, schools, villages, and counties. Second, we are working to establish 1,450 digital hubs with courtesy of our members of parliament here, one in each ward across the country, and a center of excellence in each of the 47 counties. So shortly, uh, Governor, you will have very serious competition. <laughs> other counties, uh, we are working with other counties also to develop these pieces of infrastructure with the aim of empowering communities, supporting local businesses, and ensuring equitable access to technology for all citizens, and thereby eliminating barriers that stand in the way to people who can access uh, these facilities. I take this opportunity to reaffirm the remarkable transformation that has already begun and is now accelerating exponentially as a result of the digitization of government services. You all know that in 2022, we had 390 government services that were online. Today, after two years, we have 20,855 government services that are now available on a digital platform. This will help us streamline public service delivery, 
enhance transparency and efficiency, minimize opportunities for corruption, and maximize visibility and mobilization of public revenue. The transformative impact of this single initiative on citizens' experience in accessing public services, along with the government's capacity to effectively manage public resources, clearly illustrates the immense value of digital transformation. And therefore, we don't take it for granted that we have partners like UNDP, like Timbuktu, who have come in so that we can fill this space with all interventions and initiatives. When I received um, a former vice president in my hometown, when he came to explain to me about Timbuktu, that was uh, four months ago, I think, maybe three, two months ago, I promised him that we would host them at this concert Technopolis. I'm happy that two months later, this has become a reality. And uh, congratulations to CONSA for uh, expediting this process. Our digital transformation strategy is making significant contribution to skills development and job creation. For context, initiatives like Ajira Digital and Jitume Digital have already started implementing our vision to equip 20 million citizens with ICT skills thereby fostering entrepreneurship and promoting inclusive digital literacy. We have also integrated creative industry into technical and vocational training centers as a reliable mechanism for building a skilled workforce. I am aware that um, the ministry is reaching out to every technical, every TTI across the country with digital infrastructure. We are yet to get to where we all want, but that process is ongoing. The government of Kenya is also taking robust measures to promote the emergence of a fully-fledged digital economy, leveraging Kenya's status as a regional hub for software development and digital exports. Key measures adopted in this respect include the establishment of institutional and incentive frameworks to promote investment, foster collaboration, and facilitate the transfer of digital technologies with a particular focus on artificial intelligence and blockchain. In doing so, we are empowering local digital innovators and techpreneurs to drive economic diversification and also resilience. I know as we do this, uh, this space, and I'm very proud of um, the innovators that are in our midst, the founders, the CEOs of startups that are on the way to be big companies. Uh, I remember one of them saying, we are the Dankotes of tomorrow, and I believe you. All these young men and women from across Kenya and across our continent, congratulations for what you're doing. Please, uh, you can rise up so that uh, we, can, we, can, we can recognize you. This, thank you very much. Congratulations. These uh, great uh, men and women have chosen not to be on the sidelines have chosen not to be, not to celebrate and glorify problems. They have decided to fashion solutions for the challenges that we face. That is what the future look, must look like. And congratulations, young people, for making the difficult but necessary decision to go beyond your call of duty to go beyond the challenges that we have and to begin to fashion the solutions, whether it is in climate change, whether it is in food security, whether it is in security itself, and all the other interventions in between, you are making us very proud. 
Another initiative I, want, I would like to mention is our investment in supporting local content creation. The vision behind this effort is to enhance the quality and competitiveness of local content production for export while facilitating the development of digital platforms to showcase Kenyan creativity on a global scale. I am confident that with respect to this particular initiative, the media city here at Concert Technopolis will fully achieve its objective of transforming opportunities for our creative industry. I know many young people are in that creative space. I have talked both with um, Twitter, I have talked with TikTok, and I have really pushed for that space to be monetized so that the many young people who are in that space can monetize their content. Um, I want to persuade many young people who are in that space to use it for their benefit, to use it for digital commerce, to use the content they are creating as we monetize that space, it must be pushed to be used positively for them to empower themselves and for them to grow um, themselves. I am aware that sometimes it is used for other purposes, which, which we have no problem with. Uh, but I would rather that we use that space to do what benefits the users and what benefits the consumers. These and other initiatives demonstrate Kenya's commitment to fostering innovation, creating jobs, and ensuring equitable digital access to all. They also affirm to our stakeholders that when it comes to digital transformation and the growth of a globally competitive tech ecosystem, Kenya's Silicon Savannah is the place to go and the place to be. And that's why we are here today. Our efforts do not stop here. We are also actively and intentionally enhancing the national innovation ecosystem. Recently, at the 2024 Kenya Innovation Week here in Nairobi, we inspired young innovators to develop solutions and applications with the potential to drive socioeconomic development. Currently, Kenya is ranked eighth regionally in the Global Innovation Index, but I am confident that the work we are doing will radically elevate our global standing. And I dare you, watch this space. <laughs> A few weeks ago, I launched the Silicon Savannah Innovation Park at the University of Nairobi, which you will agree is a significant step in this direction. As a research and incubation app, the park will complement the concert technopolis, positioning Nairobi as a key player in the 21st century technology sector, both in our region and globally. Kenya's national digital master plan envisions a globally competitive digital economy anchored by innovation and inclusivity. The Africa Center for Competence for Digital and AI Skilling will equip, as I am told, 100,000 public servants with, both here in Kenya and across Africa with skills in AI and digital technologies. This initiative will enhance governance by entrenching smarter, more efficient, and citizen-centric public service delivery. Without a doubt, AI is already revolutionizing industries worldwide, driving groundbreaking and often paradigm-shifting advances in diverse fields such as predictive analytics in healthcare, real-time data-driven governance, and climate change mitigation. AI holds immense potential to deliver unprecedented transformation. And I'm very happy with the steps we are making. The last trip I made to the United States, we signed a profound agreement between Microsoft, and I am happy that Microsoft in this, is in this ecosystem. Do we have Microsoft here? Congratulations, my dear. 
we signed an agreement between Microsoft of the United States, um, G42 of the UAE, and Kenya that will make it possible to have an investment of a billion dollars of start, uh, setup of data centers that will be powered by our green energy. I am very excited about that initiative. I know uh, my CS and her team have been on this issue as late as yesterday. And um, we are going to unlock tremendous potential, not just for Kenya, but for our region, to make sure that we have some of the best digital assets globally. The digital centers, the digital data centers that will be set up in Kenya under this partnership will be an asset that will be used not just by Kenya, but by our region. And it is the asset of the future. We will leverage on the technology of Microsoft, leverage on the financial capacity and AI infrastructure of the UAE, and also tap into the Kenyan green energy to make sure that we bring a collaborative and a win-win outcome. I am very excited about this and I look forward to us making the next steps. It is my very considered view that by next year we will be operating most of our data using the infrastructure that we are putting up under that <laughs> under that form. However, it is equally critical to remain vigilant and mindful of the novel ethical and security challenges posed by AI, ensuring its applications are directed towards serving the public good. I strongly believe in the power of emerging technologies to deliver transformative solutions and to enable us address climate change more effectively. The purpose of the Timbuktu Green Tech Hub to support startups in renewable energy, sustainable transportation, waste management, and energy efficiency reinforces this belief. The innovations envisioned by Timbuktu will not only strengthen our efforts in combating climate change, but also enhance our capacity to deliver public services through solutions such as solar powered systems for health centers and smart waste management for urban centers. Kenya's established credentials as a global leader in renewable energy with over 90% of our electricity generated from renewable sources provide a strong foundation for this initiative. Additionally, our vibrant startup ecosystem is home to trailblazing innovations that have redefined how we access and experience essential services. They include, of course, M-Pesa, a fintech solution that revolutionized financial inclusion through mobile money transfer. Jumia, an e-commerce platform that has expanded market access for businesses while improving convenience for consumers. M Copper, an energy tech solution offering affordable solar technology financing to underserved households. MyDawa, a health tech platform which simplified access to healthcare products and enabled inclusion. And I can go on and on. These and many other innovations reflect the vibrancy, creativity, and ambition of our digital ecosystem, while underscoring Kenya's vision for a digitally connected, innovative, and inclusive economy that is seamlessly interconnected with the rest of Africa and the world. I'm encouraged by the fact that the Dimbuktu Green Tech Hub complements similar hubs operating in Lagos, founded on FinTech, Kigali, focused on health tech, and other Timbuktu Africa Innovation Foundations, with the aim of mobilizing investments to support 100,000 startups and transform the livelihoods 
of 100 million people across our continent. The Green Revolution has created over 12 million jobs already. Africa possesses 60% of the world's solar energy potential, yet we have earnest less than 10 of this capacity. By championing green innovation, Kenya seeks to unlock economic opportunities, create green jobs, and secure a greater share of this untapped potential. Africa's demographic dividend has emphatically positioned our youth as the architects of today and masters of the future. The Green Tech Hub is a visionary investment in their creativity and potential to turn ideas into transformative solutions. As we embrace green technology, we must proactively address challenges such as carbon emissions from tech manufacturing and the growing issue of e-waste. Ensuring sustainability remains at the core of our efforts. And I like really what my sister said, that this must be about access, it must be about affordability, and it must also be about sustainability. We must have it all in a pack. The world is transitioning into a green and digital economy, and it is time for Africa to not only contribute, but also claim its rightful place in global leadership. The Africa Center for Digital Competence for, for, uh, Competence for Digital and AI Skilling and the Dimbuktu Green, Hub, Green Tech Hub represent significant milestones on this journey. Their success, and indeed our collective success, depends on collaboration among governments, the private sector, development partners, and communities. Together, we can deliver a green and digital African future powered by ambition and the indignity of our young people. Again, ladies and gentlemen, let me commend all of you for making this a reality so soon. <laughs> Listening to the former CEO of this place, now my peers, for ICT. When I came here in 2014, there was not a single tarmac road here. It was all earth road. And when I came to launch the first construction of the road, just the same way Governor Lenko has said, many people would have thought we were not serious and possibly we could have been lying. That's what people would have said. And you Joseph. But look at this. We now have a great city here. You know, we, 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 we are making tremendous progress. I have been to many countries to seek support for this facility. There was a time when I said we are going to invest 80 billion shillings to do the horizontal infrastructure and all the other things that are necessary for this facility. People thought we were not serious. I have been to Korea maybe three, four times on account of this facility. And the last time I was in Korea, we finally agreed that we will work with them to dual the road from Machako Tanov, Machako Stanov, all the way to Emali. So that road is going to be dualed for the doubting Thomases. Just so that you know, we are going to do that road. You know, we ha Thomas has been very busy in Kenya. You know, the spirit of Thomas, the doubting, <laughs> the, 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 the spirit of doubting Thomas, he's been working overtime in our country. So we are going to do that road. And equally, I know the member of parliament here has also said something about water. It is important that we deliver water to this facility. And that is why I have asked my sister there, who is now the chair of uh, Tanati, yeah, this lady, and uh, the ministry concerned that whether it is going to be Thwake, and we, um, again, let me report here that on Thwake, we, we will be approving an, an additional facility 
by cabinet in the next couple of weeks so that we can have another 9 billion shillings to be able to complete Tuake as a dam. Um, I have already talked to my friend Adesina at the Africa Development Bank to assist us with the facilitation of that amount so that we can conclude this one of the largest water projects in the Republic of Kenya here in Tuake. Uh, additionally, when I was in Korea, we also agreed that if that delays, we are going to use the facility we get from Korea that has also assisted us put up the university here, the science university here, to deliver water from um, the Nolturesh. So we have both uh, running side by side. Whichever will get us here water first will be it. So um, we, are, we are working in parallel just to make sure that there is water, not just for this facility, as was said by the governor, but by, for also the community uh, living around here so that uh, this facility can have friends and can have good neighbors. So um, we will work uh, with everybody to make sure that uh, this is done. Um, it is necessary that uh, we work collaboratively together as we focus on how we can empower our citizens and grow our economy, create jobs, and drive our progress into the future, working not just as Kenya, but with our friends and partners from this continent and from beyond. Again, on behalf of the government and people of Kenya, for those of you who've come from without our country, you're most welcome to Kenya. Kenya is ready for business and we are going to work with you. I agree that maybe the CS4 ICT should move to Konsa. Because it's a beautiful compound, isn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful place. I think you will enjoy yourself here. There is no traffic. It's a smart city. You know, there is a, all the facilities here are, are, are really good. So. Um, we will look forward to see, making it possible for Konza to achieve the intended purpose. I think we are beginning to make the steps that will take us uh, towards unlocking the potential that this space uh, significantly holds. Congratulations to our members of parliament also for passing the uh, Technopolis uh, bill. I am waiting for it. I did uh, agree with you. Uh, both committees of parliament, that it is now necessary for us to turn this place, instead of it being a project, this place should now go beyond being a project. It should, it should be something bigger uh, than, than what was originally envisioned. So congratulations to all of you, uh, to the great people of this county of Makweni. Asanteni sana kwa kutukaribisha hapa Makweni. Asanteni watu wa sehemu hii yote na nimefurahi sana uh, kusikia governor wetu akisema ya kwamba huu uh, hii technopolis ni ya Kenya mzima asante sana governor samani tulikuwa hapa na maneno mengine watu walikuwa wanasema hii ni yako na hii ni yako na ile na nafurahi kwamba tumekubaliana this is a facility not just even for Kenya you can see people from across africa already here and you can see investments from across the globe are here. Phase two, God willing, as uh, the member of parliament was saying, phase two of this project hopefully will be funded by friends from Italy. So this is an international facility. This is a facility that brings um, citizens together, the region together, and the globe together. It is a, as a facility that is good for all of us. And the potential that exists here is enormous. And we must do whatever it takes to make sure that we do not erect barriers, we do not create roadblocks, we create more bridges, we do for more facilitation so that this project can serve us all. The Africa Center for Competence for Digital and AI Scaling and the Dimbuktu Green Tech are now officially open. Thank you very much. 
Another round of applause for His Excellency.